is Jess. Hey guys, I feel like I haven't seen you guys, seen, heard you, or communicated, felt you guys in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been about a week. <laughs> we missed you. Uh, good to have you back on. Yes, we did. And uh, Nicole Hello. is uh, our other guest. Perfect. And tonight we will be reviewing Life Itself. Uh, no, not the documentary about uh, the critic Roger Ebert. That is a different two-hour documentary that's streaming. This is a uh, narrative film by Dan Fogelman. Um, he is a writer for many different movies that you've definitely heard of. Uh, the Two of the Cars movies, uh, Fred Claus, Bolt, uh, Crazy Stupid Love, uh, Las Vegas. Um, that's an eclectic He directed... Mix. Wait, he did Cars? He did Cars and Cars 2. He wrote them. He didn't direct them. That's a shame. This is his second oh movie gosh. that he's directed. Uh, his first Every movie... time I hear Life is a Highway, I'm always so hyped about that. <laughs> <laughs> that made me love that song. Did you hear our Coco review, Me and Mama K? Because we do not love Cars. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, this is his second uh, directorial debut. Or directorial debut. It's the second directing credit after Danny Collins, which is an Al Pacino movie from a couple years ago. Um, and he is probably most known as the creator and executive producer of the movie, or not the movie, of the TV show, This Is Us. Yes. Yeah. People you love can, that. If you watch this, people do love it. I, it looks sappy and horrible to me, but I, you know, I don't watch, <laughs> I don't watch TV like You I have no movies, soul, so. basically, is what you're saying. And I think he has too much soul. <laughs> He's a soul man. <laughs> he, he has I, too I much soul about... to understand, like, the sappy soul. <laughs> I have sap in me. You're in my eternal sunshine ness. Have you, you I cried for the last half hour of Coco, did you not? Alright, well I, I, I I'm sorry. I, I'm sappy for good writing and story and characters that make sense. And uh, you know well alright, well let's get into this. Life <laughs> itself I'll give you the uh synopsis and then we will go into spoilers. Uh Life Itself centers on a couple Oscar Isaac and Olivia Wilde, uh, that lead a multi-generational love story spanning both decades and continents, from the streets of New York to the Spanish countryside, and they are all interconnected by a single event. Pretty accurate, unfortunately. Yeah, that would um, say so. So, yeah, like, this, like we said, uh, this stars Oscar Isaac, Olivia Wilde, people probably know them from million things um yeah, i was gonna Patinkin. say from everything <laughs> yeah i i think if you're listening to a movie podcast you know them uh mandy patinkin um olivia cook i love olivia cook she was in a thoroughbreds last year she was in ready player one yeah um, she's in a lot of recent things i think she's just recently became a huge my favorite hit. thing of hers is a tv show is um bates, bates motel, motel. Oh my god, I love Bates Motel. Oh, I watched Bates Motel yes. two years ago. She was great. Yeah, oh, yeah. TV, mm, good stuff. Um, <laughs> so yeah, she's in this. Um, you have Annette Bening. Uh, you have Antonio Banderas. Uh, and you have Samuel Jackson, briefly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a, and there's a bunch of other people in it. I won't name everyone. There's just too many. Those are, I guess, your most recognizable names. Um, and it's a film breaking down into five chapters. Uh, it's like a dramedy, I guess, a drama comedy that is both English and Spanish language. Uh, we should say before we go into anything else, this is streaming on Amazon Prime. It came out last year, so if you did not see it in theaters, it's on Prime. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, it's a Prime movie, so I think it'll be there for a while. Um, so the way we rate things here at what Films with Women in My Life are on four criteria. That is the plot. The characters, the visual and sound, and the overall resonance and feel. So I will start with the person who has seen this movie twice before this review. <laughs> uh, Jess, what do you think of the plot of Life Itself? Okay, so going into this, I had very, very, very high hopes. Um, I really, This Is Us is really? probably my favorite show. Second favorite show next to SpongeBob. <laughs> my second favorite show <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Jess has weird taste, in case you guys haven't figured it out. She loves horror movies and Tyler Perry movies and Spongebob. Like, Jess is all over the map, so. <laughs> so when I saw the trailers saying that this is produced by the people that produce This Is Us, I was super excited about it. Um, so I saw it in theaters, and I did like it. Um, I probably had over expectations about it. I think some parts were kind of boring, but I think the plot was very unique and I like how the stories come together. I don't think this has ever been done in a movie that 
I mean, it's well known or I've seen. And I like how it's different. And when some people try to do something different, it gets, I don't know, like, sometimes it's too confusing or the audience can't really understand it. But I liked how there was two different um, subplots to this. So I probably would give it a eh, 3.5. Again, it was boring at times. Um, and there's a lot of slow parts. And it's definitely not action-filled, so which is probably why I liked it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought it was enjoyable. Um I, I like stuff like this, so it was fun for me. And, uh, Nicole, you are the one who picked this uh, to review, so uh, what did you think of the plot? I did pick this uh, basically the same way that I picked Acrimony. I was scrolling through and <laughs> no, we watched, all know that one really well. watched a couple of trailers <laughs> and said, oh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> but if I could just read from my notes here, it says plot. Two, what plot? So much unnecessary shit going on. So, <laughs> what I think about this... <laughs> this movie... Yeah, there, there really is no plot. No, like, this movie could have been cut down, like, by a quarter, I think. Um, the first part was really interesting when we have Oscar Isaac's story, and then all of a sudden, like, a third of the way through, he that he's just gone. Like, I understand what happened to him, but... They don't talk about him anymore. I feel like they don't intertwine him with the rest of the story. But I guess that's where they're trying to, I don't know, bring the next uh, generation in. But I didn't care for that too much. Second part, so fucking boring. I was like, ugh, we were dying. Um, which is the story <laughs> with um, in Spain with Antonio Banderas, who just randomly shows up. And then the... I thought there was only three parts in this. You said five, but I wrote the third part. There are five. I'll, <laughs> I'll, read, them, I'll read them off when I get to okay, my part, the, but I'll let you the, I'll finish up what you were saying there. The <laughs> ending. <laughs> um, it was exceptionally cheesy, but average. Um, so I, I think I give this one a two. Okay. Um, so a little, a little, you know, anywhere from pretty bad to pretty good. Um I'm going to give it a nice two five. Oh, right in the middle. Because, so there's three, there are, there's five stories, basically. Not exactly. I would say there's three, but there are five chapters. And I we can't go through this whole movie. It's too long and too much not stupid shit happens uh, to <laughs> actually go plot point by plot point. Um, so I'll just give you, here are the five categories. You start with the, the hero, which is Oscar Isaac and Olivia Wilde's story. You get uh, Dylan Dempsey is chapter two. That is Olivia Cook's story. Chapter three is called The Gonzalez Family. That is Antonio Banderas, uh, L- Lea Costa, and uh, Sergio Perez Manchetta. Uh, like I said in Coco, I cannot nice pronounce try. Spanish anything. <laughs> so uh, forgive me, everyone who speaks Spanish, for how bad I just said those things. Um, so that's chapter three is The Gonzalez Family. Chapter four is Rodrigo Gonzalez, the son of of uh isabel and javier from the chapter three story and we end with elena dempsey gonzalez the granddaughter of olivia cook and oscar wilde and javier and isabel from the other two stories so we got five stories for you here i would say we spend the bulk of our time with two of them uh and that is the first one the hero uh and the third one the gonzalez family i think that's pretty much how it boils down uh it's basically a generational story you start with the grandparents you go to the daughter you start with the other grandparents you go to the son you culminate with the granddaughter um i was expecting some twists especially with the whole theme of the unreliable unreliable narrator um i'll start with you jess did you see how where this was going the whole time or is it pretty not expected like how, how did this how did it unfold to you yeah, I did not see the very end. Well, can I spoil the very end, or do you want to go through the series? No, first? I don't really, because this is there's too many there's too much too many things to go through, and I don't think it's quite worth it to stop at every stop. So let's just jump around a little bit. Okay, so the very end, how it comes together is Olivia Cook is um, crying outside, and then the son um, kind of just runs into her, and then they became a. Uh, it's hard to explain. So the two stories come together with the babies of both of the stories right. um, starting their own family. Um, so I didn't see that coming at all. And it, I liked it because it makes you think, like, where in life have you seen someone before? And then maybe 
somehow they influence your life and you have no idea and you can see them again. I don't know. I felt like that's probably going more into the resonation part, but I, I don't know. I thought it was cool. Um, I didn't see it coming. I knew there was something that would intertwine them together, but I didn't necessarily know that it was that. I thought it kind of, the intertwine kind of ended with the bus scene, but it brought it back um, years later when the two characters um, find each other. I definitely felt that too. I felt like they wanted so desperately for these stories to intertwine. And while there's a base there of what it is, it really wasn't done well. Like I wanted to feel that, that connection through it too. And the stories, I feel some of them ended so abruptly that you couldn't, you couldn't connect them. Like it, I I didn't see it as two families coming together till the very end when we see, um, the two meet at night on the park bench. But that, there's so many things that they could have done differently to get to that point that I think that they really missed. So the whole, yeah. So the whole crux of this movie is that we start with Oscar Isaac. Um, he's like, uh, we find out very slowly that he's gotten out of an institution, like a mental institution. Um, and that it was because his wife, uh, Olivia Wilde was hit by a bus and killed while pregnant, very pregnant with their daughter who survives goes and lives with the grandparents that becomes olivia cook and the one of the, the grandmother dies so he, she lives with the grandfather this and part's like, like real cryptic adult. and mysterious that that's what keeps you yeah. lead let on for the first hour it's got all these flashbacks and all this stuff like that part was pretty cool yeah I, and- yeah i prefer the first story over the second i think if they even made their own movie without the whole, you know, life itself. I think that I would have enjoyed it probably more than I did with the two together. So I think we're in agreement then. The first, I guess, two stories, The Hero and Dylan Dempsey, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, is the best stuff in this movie. We get Oscar Isaac and Olivia Wilde's story, which is got some creative bits, a little bit uneven, um, but for the most part, good. And then we get Olivia Cook's story, which I will go and say, I don't know about you guys, that's my favorite part of the movie. Olivia Cook's little, uh, when she's growing up, uh, when she, they do those weird scenes with her grandfather, where it's like, this is what she's thinking, this is what he's thinking, but they don't verbalize it, but this is what it would sound like if they did verbalize it. That's a really good scene that I remember. I thought that was the part um, that could have been cut. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I think well, I like Will been- and Abby's story the best the very first the beginning mm-hmm. yeah so i i mean it's pretty good it's it's got it's a little uneven um i think it's got to be the directing and I, and but before we get into that further we've talked about the first half characters and now the second half characters and i think this is the weakness of the film is the gonzalez family it, I don't know what it is, but they're really uninteresting. Oh my god, the directing are, just took a turn, like a dive bomb. Their charisma, I mean, oh, safer. Yeah, I Antonio agree. Banderas. I really wanted to like it, but I think that's when I got a little bored was their story. They just, I like the synopsis. I like that idea of it. I don't know what it is about it that just doesn't capture you as much. I think it's it's. I think it's a little of everything. I mean, the writing isn't as sharp for them. The directing is weaker. Like the shots are not interesting or engaging. Everything's very sterile. I mean, he's this is the, he's a the you know the creator. Of this is us. It feels like a TV show. It doesn't feel cinematic. It feels very. And you have all these like cool flashbacks that he did in the first part, and really told a story of why someone's life went this crazy way and how he ended up in this position and now we have like you said like a narrative this is just a long flat book that i'm reading and i don't like it it's not the way that the first part was (laughs) (laughs) yeah and i i don't know like i said i think the idea of the second story is really interesting i think it just could have been done a lot better to capture the audience so we've i mean what so uh the characters then um it's definitely a mixed bag, but overall, I'll start with you, Nicole, on this one. What did you think of the characters, if you had to give them a rating? Um, I gave the characters a two all around. Um, I was, Oof. we were, me and you were watching this, and 
Brennan thought that the f- the first grandpa was Antonio Banderas when we first see him. Okay. Oh my god, that is so funny. Yes, so, I did. <laughs> then when we get around to the <laughs> second half and we see fucking Antonio Banderas, I'm like, what is going on? I didn't know if they were supposed to be brothers because at that point it would be pretty like <laughs> incesty if these families got together because they're kind of cousins, you know. It was just hold on. I want to I want to explain that more. So. I think I first mentioned Antonio Banderas in the very first part before we even meet the grandfather. We didn't even know he was in this film yet. No, I didn't know. I, I knew it, I knew Oscar Isaac and Olivia Wilde were in this because they're on the poster. That's all I knew. I didn't know anyone else was in this. Um, and uh, you've got <laughs> you've got uh, they do a flashback to um, uh, Will and Abby at like a Pulp Fiction party when they're in college. And what did I say when I saw Oscar Isaac in like the stupid silky <laughs> hair, like he's trying to be John Travolta? I was like, he looks like a, a young Antonio Banderas right there. Then we cut to the <laughs> dinner scene, and it's the and it's the grandpa and the grandma. I'm like, that guy looks like Antonio Banderas because his eyes looked like it. And then you were like, no, it's not him. That's not him. He looks, and I, I took a little closer look, and I'm like, okay, you're right. He looks more like Eugene Levy from American Pie. Um, <laughs> uh, but then later on, like an hour later. It's him. Antonio Banderas him. shows up, <laughs> and I'm but but he's got the big beard like the other guy, so and he's wearing sunglasses at first. So I'm like, like that. yeah, and I thought they were related. I didn't think they were gonna be the like the grand the great grandparent scenario. So you get and because when he showed up, I look I turn to you. I'm like, oh, is this like a flashback? Because he looks the, the grandfather looks way younger, and then he takes his glasses <laughs> off, and I'm like, oh my god, that's actually Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Thank now. God they're not so related. Was, that story would have been a whole different thing if they were related. But besides, it was distracting. <laughs> it I mean, was. to be honest, it probably kept me more interested than I would have been otherwise uh, in, that, <laughs> in that middle chunk. And the last um, thing I have to say about these guys is what happened to the grandpa? They never came back to him. Did he die? They never said he was old. He was sick. I don't know. No, he wasn't. But anywho, regardless of that, who cares? Um, the, <laughs> who cares? the people, the the characters when we were in Spain are just mad boring. Unfortunately, I like Oscar Isaac the most in the sense that they gave him the most effort when they when they gave him his uh, script and they made him real crazy and you felt his pain. You felt how fucked up he got after all this happened, and that's when I felt the most. Um, from a character was from him. Everybody else was really kind of sidelined for me. What did you think, Jess? Yeah, I agree with Nicole. I think you have the most feel with Will's character, but I don't know. I kind of like them all, which I know all of you guys. I'm sorry, you like the Gonzalez family? Because they are the most charisma-free bunch of people. Other than Antonio Banderas, it is a charisma vacuum. It is. Oh. <laughs> when a guy's drunk, he's not even drunk. Like, he was just sitting there with... Like, no, he just looked tired. He was. They were, like, begging me to not tired. pay attention. They were begging me to not care. Like, oh, so unfortunate. Yeah. No, I agree. The second story is less engaging, but I, I do like Isabel's character. Um, I think she does a good job as a mother, and handling the situation he has between her two men or i guess her three because of her son um so i don't know and i liked how she her ideal of family and trying to protect her son and at the very end having her son close to her but knowing that he has to go away for school and i don't know i admired her there um will like i agree with nicole um i felt him the most and i liked his therapy sessions i thought that was you, I mean, I don't think anyone can really understand the extent of his emotions, but you kind of have an overview of what he's going through. And I think I just like whatever Olivia Wilde does, so I automatically just have to like her. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I mean, Olivia Wilde's... The, uh, uh, that's the thing is, Olivia Wilde and Oscar Isaac are two of my favorite working actor and actresses today, like, in the past 10 years. Like, they're awesome. They're so good. I, I like... Th- even if I don't like what they're in, I usually like them. Um, and I would agree that they're the two of them, and I like Olivia Cook's character. I guess the Dempsey side of the family I like, um, and the Gonzalez side is just so boring. They're so boring. It's really unfortunate that they're so boring. Yeah. Even the son is boring. At all ages, he's boring. Um, yeah, the son was a horrible actor. I think they could have chose someone better. I think the- <laughs> like the college scenes. I was like, okay. Okay, so you know who my favorite character... I give it a 2-5, by the way, the characters. But you know who my favorite character is in the Gazala story? The shitty girlfriend oh that he has. Don't! I knew you were going to say that. I was like, don't say the girlfriend. <laughs> she's... 
I think I turned to Nicole within the first minute of her talking. I'm like, oh my god, she's the worst thing ever. And then very quickly, as I often do, within three minutes of her talking, I'm like, oh my god, she's fucking awesome. <laughs> she's so stupid. She, she's so vain. And <laughs> like, needed something to pick that up. That's why she's so funny. So she, she, and I have to say this once, she, she lies to the son saying that she's pregnant and they go through this whole thing but the whole time she's acting like a fucking ditz like she's like do you guys do you guys like abortion and oh you're really christian like can you not have abortions if you're christian okay well let's go over like and they go to like brunch to have their options and then her third option is or maybe it's just april fools and then the guy's (laughs) like i don't know what that is he's like oh you don't Oh, we gotta admit it was pretty funny. Like she's so stupid. It, yeah, she's just like she brought me back to all the dumb girls in college that I never liked. <laughs> See, I think I think they're humor. I, th- I find them humorous. I find I find them as caricatures very funny because they're so terrible. It's uh, it's it's because it, if it's not for her. I'm bored. Oh, I don't yeah. want to be Anything bored. Anything else would have been just And I've horrible. said it before. I, I'm okay with movies that are... And this isn't bad enough to be bad. Because there's the first hour is pretty good. Like, it's a decent movie. And then it's awful, but not awful fun awful. Like, I like awful boring awful. <laughs> like, everyone's flat and no charisma. And I don't care about the dialogue or anybody. And she comes back in and she brings back that uh, that dumb awful. And, you know, now, I've, now I'm at least paying attention because she's being, she's being an idiot. Um, really? I thought she was extremely insignificant, and I hardly even thought about her. So she did nothing reason- for me. No, she's in it for like five minutes. The only reason I think about her is because that's the only thing I remember from the Gonzalez family <laughs> story, other than Antonio Banderas' ten-minute monologue about <laughs> picking olives with the uh. other guy, with Javier. <laughs> and Nicole looked at me during that scene, she was like, they're still talking? What are they talking about? What are they- they're-, they're still talking about picking olives? I'm like, yeah, it's a pivotal scene. Oh. Like, I don't... Like, Steve, stuff like that is more, I don't know, emotional or dramatic or better acted, you could say. But I'm bored. <laughs> I would we rather watch... I bored dumb- at the end, too, when the mom was giving her goodbye speech. Like, it was just... Ugh. Every time she would stop talking, she would be like, and also, don't forget. <laughs> and then another thing. <laughs> I, I put my hand in my face, and you were like, oh, are you crying? I'm like, no, I'm bored. I'm tired. <laughs> this has been... This is a four-hour movie, and it's actually not. It's, like, less than two hours. But, oh, Lord. It's <laughs> awful. She's awful. Um, I gave it a two five because I'm I'm shitting on the parts that we don't like. It sounds like we all are that the Gonzalez family is the is the weaker chunk of this movie, um, and we end with Elena Dempsey Gonzalez, the daughter of, and I think we said it earlier, the little kid who witnessed uh, Olivia Wilde get hit by a bus in the beginning. That is the kid who will go on to marry More Olivia. Was a kid Cook. that caused her to get hit by a bus? Pretty much, yeah, and that went on to. <laughs> to meet Olivia Cook somehow like way in the future and then the two of them even further in the future had this kid who even further in the future wrote a book and she's been the narrator her this whole time I we guess had it never Jackson. comes up in the family of how Olivia Cook's parents died because don't you think he would just shit himself if he learned that he killed her her mom yeah, I I mean, by the time we learn they're together and it's the daughter, it's the last five minutes, and I can't, I I wouldn't stand another twenty minutes of this movie. But <laughs> this I and I I was frustrated because there's a good movie in here, especially in the first hour. I'm like, you cut forty five minutes of this, drop a subplot here or there, and there's a good movie in here, but it's too long and it's too much. I don't care, but there's good stuff in here, which is, that's what's frustrating. But It's just life itself. There is no plot. <laughs> is that what I'm supposed to feel? It's like, Oh, I'm so yes. bored. Like, just like life. Sometimes you're bored. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess you've effectively <laughs> summed life up. It's exciting in the beginning. And then you're bored for half your life. And then the end happens. <laughs> like, oh my God. I guess it is like life. <laughs> oh, so, um, visual and sound. Go ahead, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just cut scene. Next one. Um, yeah, not too much. I'm waiting for end game at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Probably um, a two five. I think the again. I think the therapy sessions were the biggest visual for me. I liked how his relationship with the therapist very inappropriate and very chaotic he just came out of the crazy house and it definitely feels that way um and i want to say i liked the scenes in spain but 
they weren't something they should be like my favorite part but again this was probably the weaker part of the budget where i don't think (laughs) there was too much of that going on what did you think uh, nicole um i gave it a three um actually i thought that the spain shots were really beautiful i just thought that you know they picked good scenes in in the sense of the the olive farm was really nice and the house was so beautiful i like that a lot um some of the flashback scenes in the first part were really pretty with the soft focus and all like that really brought you back to how i oscar isaac was feeling um it was surreal for him when i can't really tell if he was actually overbearing or not but in his mind, he was not. It was beautiful, and I, I liked that part a lot. Uh, I love the Bob Dylan throughout that. That was probably the best thing that they did to keep this thing intertwined, <laughs> was put Bob Dylan throughout every aspect of this movie. Um, there was Even if you don't like Bob Dylan, it needed something to connect everything. <laughs> that was the only thing that was connecting it. So um, I, I don't mind Bob Dylan, so I, I like that a lot. I like the song that they played all the time. Um, but, that you know, it, it was okay. It was better than other things that we critique. <laughs> um, like the rest of this movie, the first hour is good and the rest is not. <laughs> like it, it's 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 the common recurrent thing. I'm repeating myself and I won't do it again. <laughs> it's a 2.5, just like all my other ratings so far. I love the weird scenes with Oscar Isaac and Olivia Wilde. Um, there's like weird reality bending scenes where you don't know what's actually happening, and the story's interesting there. Um, and I'll, I'll admit it's shot decently in Spain. I like the shots of the club that Olivia uh, Cook plays at, her like punk club. Um, by the end, uh, yeah. I don't really care about anything. I don't like the music. I mean, if you like Bob Dylan, maybe you'll like it. I just is there anything else in there? Is there any other music cues? That's gonna say because I I'm not a huge Bob no, Dylan that, fan, that's it. and I don't remember anything else. So yeah, <laughs> so this rises. To think about this rises on the strength of the first hour of visuals, which are very, which are good. They're above average, um, and there's some good, decent visuals later on when the story is not as good. Um, and they somehow roped Samuel L. Jackson into doing this, so that probably bumps it up in. a little he, bit. For he's people. trying to break the record for most movies ever. I'm pretty sure. Like he's in like 40 <laughs> movies a year. Um, is that really what he's doing? No, I have no idea. He just seems. Oh. I love. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm going to say right now. I love Samuel Jackson. I don't care if he's the same kind of person in every movie. He, if he, I mean, uh, I wish there was more of him in this. I wish he were the narrator the whole time. I bet it'd be way funnier and more interesting because he's actually uh, fun. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a two five across the board, and you know, I'm just going to go into the feel and resonance now because we pretty much exhausted the movie. Um, mm-hmm. It's. A one for me. Oh my goodness! Big old one. You know why it's a one? It's because I think we all know why. (laughs) Because it is less than the sum of its parts. It is a dud. (laughs) After competent storytelling in in parts and good visuals in parts and good acting for the most part and good characters sometimes, it's an uneven movie that by the end I am I I'm, I'm. Begging for it to be over. Begging. After the... Like, it doesn't... I mean, the only reason I would remember this movie is because I'd be remembering how frustrated I was. And that's what I really don't like about it is because they're... It's because it's not incompetently horrible. It's got parts that are good and it's just not good, which is so frustrating. I don't like that. I don't like when something has potential and it's bad. I like when things are terrible and they're bad or when they're good and they're good. like a teacher. (laughs) Yeah, I do. I feel like I, I feel like this is the this is the fucking kid in class who gets fucking C minuses and he could be getting A's, but he doesn't yeah. try. And instead, he just wants to fucking throw shit at me while I'm teaching. It's a it's very frustrating. I'm like, you could be an A student. You can go to anywhere college in the world. Instead, you're fucking wasting your life. Like, I feel like that, that's this movie. This is the C minus student. What I who's totally felt like you, you feel like about this movie. Okay, that's why it's so bad. Because I, I don't mind the C minus student who's an idiot because he's funny sometimes. I mind the CMOS student <laughs> who could be more. So, one. Uh, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gave this a 2.5. <laughs> um, I'm a little afraid to now, but... <laughs> um, no, that's just my opinion. I, I'm, you know, I'm sure some people love this movie. It's definitely It definitely has a life lesson for everybody in this. I have to say, if you sit down and think about the different things that occur during this movie, it's going to hit somebody in the feels 
some type of way. So, like, between Ugh. the mom dying at the end, I, I'm sure that there's been, you know, count, there's countless people that have had that feeling of watching a loved one pass or m- losing their, their, their parent or something like that. And, you know, right now in current events, the stigma of people that have mental disorders and being in a nut house, if you want to call it that, institutionalized, that's a big deal right now. So to have Oscar Isaac play that role and to play it well, where you feel bad for him because he's helpless at this point, that really says something to me. Um, I, I like thinking about that, you know, um, everything else really goes by the wayside after those two things. Um, like we've, like we've, said multiple times already that middle part could have had potential to give us something so much more in the sense of a broken family home when the when the husband leaves in spain but it was just like i'm gonna leave can you take care of my family okay i will and like what the (laughs) fuck was that like (laughs) that was that was so stupid but regardless of that um it it was it was average for me a 2.5 is a good choice all right jess what do you got so, yeah, I'm a little scared to give it a four. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. My, all right, well, fine. You could you can defend this like Eternal Sunshine. This will be your Eternal Sunshine. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I'm pretty sure that in theaters I cried four times, and I don't oh. think I've ever You? Cried since... You don't cry at anything? Yeah, cried at this? No, I, cr- I cry at This Is Us in Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> This is why we have Jess on. She's just so much different than our other hoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I think I it, it did what it had to do. Like, the whole movie itself was life itself, and there was not supposed to be a huge plot or pivotal events or a lot happening. It's kind of like just for you to understand everyone's story and how they're connected. And, yeah, it could be boring, but... There's also suicide and the bad girlfriend, and it all comes together. And I don't know. I think it delivered what it was meant to do. Well, I like this. I like that we all have very different opinions on this. I don't like when we all agree. Sometimes, you know, it gets a little boring when we have different opinions. I think it's a, life I think it's a more itself. engaging show. It's it's life itself, you know. It's it's got ups and downs. <laughs> But it's mostly terrible. So, uh, got Nicole, and haters. <laughs> Nicole, since it sounds like you're the middle opinion, I'll ask you first. Do you recommend Life Itself? Oh God! I mean, it really just depends on who you are as a person. If you're Do watching, you, you recommend I'm telling Life you, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I know it depends. I'm who the you type are. of person that doesn't have a soul sometimes. So, when it comes to this type of thing, I I don't feel like i like it that <laughs> to recommend it. like it just <laughs> it, it wasn't the type of movie that grabs me for other people this will totally grab you if you've been in scenarios like this and you feel that this is how your life has gone you're gonna you're gonna love this because you feel a connection i per se don't have that connection so i'm gonna not recommend it to people that are heartless sometimes like i am because you're gonna think it's boring <laughs> and played out just um, I would recommend this. Obviously not to someone. Like, I, I knew Brennan wasn't going to like it. I think I told you, you're not going to like this she movie. She did. She called it for this, and she called it for acrimony. So Jess knows when I, Jess knows my taste, so that's good. <laughs> and I know hers, too, so I think we, that that's that's helpful for the show. <laughs> it is. Um, I don't know. I, I like these kinds of movies where there's not, it's kind of hard for my ideal of dull, because, like, I can't do, like, doll like history doll but i can do modern day doll and (laughs) i like the modern day doll like this um because i don't i can't do action i can't follow everything but i like a simple story and following it and the feels that go along with it so i recommend this um probably not a super strong recommend like said in the beginning i think i had higher expectations than what i thought the first story definitely the second one not so much but i think it's worth watching a second to see it all come together yeah, um, you know, I don't recommend it, obviously, uh, because <laughs> it could be good and it isn't, and that's kind of what I have to say. I mean, I don't want to repeat myself. Um, you know, it's I, I'm sure there are people who will like this, but if it's me recommending it or not, I can't. It's too long. It's too much waste. Um, the ratings, it, if you've seen, are like everywhere. So if you look at Amazon, 
it got a 4.4, but then if you look at like Rotten Tomatoes, I think it oh, got it's a thirteen like percent. <laughs> I checked it after this movie. I'm like, do people like this? Am I missing something? Am I just crazy? Um, not with the critics. Uh, there are users who like user scores who like this, and I think it might be because, like Jess, you said this is a movie like of which you've never seen as far as like how the stories intersect and everything ties together. There's, I mean, I've seen many movies. I think the biggest the the biggest one I can consider like this is uh, the '90s movie Shortcuts, directed by Robert Altman. It feels like a poor man's shortcuts. So, if you uh, it, that's that's very similar. It's got like seven or eight life stories that all intersect in different ways, um, and it's also too long. Um, it's a better movie though. So, if you like, uh, if you are a Robert Altman fan, um, like from the olden days, you might want to give this a chance. Um, but for me personally, no, it's not a recommend. It's um, it's too much wasted potential. It's too frustrating. Uh, so <laughs> a person we, that likes this movie is probably gonna like that movie that's coming out with the kid that falls in the lake. Oh my! We are never reviewing that. What is that called? The fucking movie <laughs> with the other woman from This Is Us. Um, yes! Oh, I wanted to see that. <laughs> of course you did. Oh, you you guys can review that without me. You can do the first. That well, uh, although that one was really religious, so I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But oh, that's what cuts I'll give you it off. a chance though. <laughs> All right, um, so we got one, one uh, medium recommend, one slight not recommend, and one strong not recommend. So we're kind of all over the place here. Um, you know, if you've listened to the show, I think you probably at this point know who you side with as far as your personal taste. So uh, whoever you side with, you know, make your decision based off that. Um, Team Jessica. Woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> Giving myself Jessica. a shout out. <laughs> yeah, team Jessica. If you if you like just the oddest eclectic sense of movies, <laughs> if you love acrimony and life itself, <laughs> and Pet Cemetery <laughs> and uh, and us uh, and SpongeBob, I don't like. <laughs> I know. Usually, I don't like movies too much, but the past few, I've been advocating for. So. All right. Does anyone have anything else to add for uh, life? It's life itself. No. I hope I there's I more stuff like this coming out soon. I hope uh, I never have to see if, it. If, <laughs> if Nicole keeps picking movies, I'm sure we'll find more movies that Jess likes and I hate. <laughs> I <could pick laughs> I think one that's more the trend. Coming up. Is Nicole pick movies that I hate and Jess too. loves? <laughs> I did pick one more movie that's coming up soon, so we'll see. That's the one I actually have the highest hopes for. Uh, Beautiful Boy. That'll be coming out in a few weeks. Also on Prime. So uh, check it out before we review it because that's got Steve Carell, and I'm hoping that that's good. But we'll see. Um, so that's that's it for Life Itself. Um, we got Endgame this week. Um, it's either already out or coming out the next episode. Not sure which order we're releasing these in yet. Just a little behind the scenes. Um and then uh, we've got a lot of uh, movies coming out in theaters this month. Finally, it's here, May. Uh, we're going to get a whole bunch. We got The Intruder, uh, the Dennis Parent Quaid Trap movie. Two. Parent Trap 2. Yeah, Jess calls it Parent Trap 2. Um, we've got <laughs> Detective Pikachu. Um, towards the end of the month, we have Godzilla King of the Monsters. We've got Rocket Man. Um, the Hustle. We've got The Hustle. Uh, that's uh, We've got, what else do we have? Ma. <laughs> I really want to see Ma. That looks not good, but I want to see it. Uh, <laughs> Octavia Spencer movie. Um, and then June, a whole bunch more big releases. So a lot of theater stuff coming up. A couple more streaming reviews. If you have anything to recommend, though, Films with a Woman in My Life on Facebook, Films Women Pod on Twitter, and I am Brennan underscore pod host on Instagram. Uh, Jess, Nicole, thank you for being on. Thank, thank you. you very much. And until next time, everyone, this is Brennan signing off saying, enjoy your movies. Thanks for listening to Films with the Women in My Life. If you enjoyed being a listener in our life, subscribe to us on iTunes. Please leave a review as it helps more people find the show. Like us on Facebook at Films with the Women in My Life. Follow us on Twitter at Films Women Pod. And check out our website, filmswiththewomen.libsyn.com. That's filmswiththewomen.libsyn.com. Original music for the show was created by Ian Burke. Original artwork created by Nicole D'Alessio. This show is produced by Brand C.